Welcome back. For some weeks, Nigerians experienced heavy rains across the country, causing an increase in water level, which in turn resulted in heavy flooding in some areas. The rain is a natural occurrence, but some of the causes of flooding have been traced to human activities. Following the pictures that you sent, Eyewitness visits Bariga Local Council Development Area and Ogombo in Etiosa LCDA, both in Lagos, as well as Yenegua in Bayosa State. For weeks, residents of Araro Miodo community in Bariga have enjoyed going through flooded streets. Why not? Oshin Folarin, Udukoya, and Afolabi Brown are among over 10 streets that have continued to be inundated by water from heavy rains. Maybe sometimes you'll be sleeping when you wake up everywhere, both under your bed. Water will, when there's no rain, water will flow everywhere. Not small water, it will be like liver, as, I, as I'm saying. So sometimes before you wake up, if your TV is there, floor, water don't enter them. If your laptop is there, down, water don't enter them. Your phone, water don't spoil many, many people things here. Both their matalas, water don't finish everything. Some people say, don't they pack when there's no nowhere to go? The water is coming from the Moshin, Shomolu, down here. And Moshin and Shomolu, the canal is very wide. Why um, this, our area, the canal is very narrow. And that is why we, um, uh, we are facing a lot of challenges here. While this is caused by incessant rainfall, and accepted as a natural occurrence, residents say the inability of a canal to absorb more water and transport it into the lagoon has further worsened the situation. When the canal is filled up, it flows back into the street. And once it flows back into the street, it goes to the houses of people that are living around this area. And that's why I pray that government should come and at least look at this, the canal, expand it. We need expansion of the canal because it has a link from here to the, to the sea, to the river. Uh, the is is a, is a small canal that can just stop on the particular place, a different thing. But this one it has a link to the to the sea, and uh, because of that flow, once the seashore rises, it flows back to the to the canal from the canal to the street, and uh, we don't have control over that. It's only government that can do that for us, and we pray that government to support us in that. To buttress their claim, a wood is used to ascertain the depth of the canal. Going by the watermark on the wood, it is barely two feet deep. Pakola Ogunkoya has been using water pump to push water out from his compound. The government should look into um, geographical topography um, of the area, not Afolabi Brown Street alone, because we cannot be in isolation. For example, please, this place becomes shock absorber. Immediately the canal is filled up. I mean, you can imagine water level as high as this. Where, where is the street? So it, when it comes like this, it will come, the, 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 the canal is filled up from the sea anyway, and then it will be moving towards our drainage. It will come like this. Then the same canal moves down there. When it gets to achieve for land, instead of water going to the canal, the canal is receding back. So we here, we are shock absorber. We have from left, from, <laughs> I mean, that is our own problem. The chairman of Bariga Local Council Development Area, Kolade Alabi, responds to the appeal. I will not agree that it's a problem of a, a small drainage. Uh, that area is a flood prone area, and it's some part of Bariga. At least where we are now, uh, the, this place is uh, flood free. Uh, we have Bagada and we have Obanikoro that are flood free. And, uh, major part of the uh, Pedro area. But that area, yes, I know, we've been there and we have solution to their problems. But we we'll just have to appeal to them that uh, they have to be patient with the government and uh, very soon uh, they sh will see the government response to that. We have escalated that and um, I can also tell you for free that um, we even had design for that area. We have five major roads in that area. Uh, Obadia, 
Odukoya, Ogunleye, and Ajileye Street. That will be done and no for line. Right now, we are working on some roads in that community. We are working on, in Murun Fulu right now. And uh, Thomas Drive, and uh, while we are working in all this area, is just to ensure that there is a free flow of water so that we to at least to minimize uh, that uh, water coming from that high tide area to, the, to this area so that it can discharge water from this uh, uh, collector to the major canal. The chairman also debunks allegations that the local government lacks the financial capacity to tackle the challenge. Yeah, I'm not from that school of thought that they believe that the local government does not have the capacity and capability to do things. You understand me? Well, I don't think that statement is correct. Uh, whatever the fall within our purview definitely will be addressed and will be done. You know, of course, we have some rules that are state rules, and we have inner, some inner rules that are local government uh, rules. And any rules that fall within our own purview definitely will be done. Owodi Ogombo in Etiosa is also facing a similar challenge. <laughs> All this place, the whole community was so flooded. Water entering from most of the building, except the one that was well planned and built. That is the one the water could not enter. This problem is not new to residents, but this year's flood comes in an unimaginable frequency, mostly attributed to human factors. We discover that some people built fences on the canal. And, um, and that is blocking the free flow of water you know, to the big canal across Ekota Bridge, Ekota School. So that's, that's what we are facing now. Several times we brought in some boogie to open the canals, you know, just like the Lagos State Law that you cannot destroy anybody's property. You know, we only left those places in which are blocked with um, fences or structures. The flood caused by excessive downpour in Yenagoa, the Bialsa State capital, is much more pathetic. The flood has taken its toll on communities and rendered many homeless. In where I am coming from, me, I'm from West. They, build, they do gutter before anything. But we found it here now that they could not be able to do any gutter, no drainage. That is why we are passing through this stress. I need to bring my children out every morning to take them out from this water. And we go in again in the evening. It don't supposed to be like that. That flood has taken over his shop is not what Mr. Wisdom envisaged when he opened for business. He's left with no choice than to face the reality. Wisdom is not the only person whose business is stalled by the flood. Grace Couple may also have to close her business for now. Everywhere don't sink and finish. Water don't spoil many things. So may federal government help us for this condition when we day every year. So the suffer for bias are too much. Residents say the absence of functional drains is largely responsible for the devastating impact of the flood. Where this water is supposed to pass through has already been blocked. This road construction, which is uh, of course uh, something we welcome from the government. But as it is, most of the channels were blocked. Instead of them putting culverts, they refuse to put culverts. And then, of course, you find out that there are no drainages in all of the roads that are constructed, even within Igbogne, no drainage. So it is a really terrible situation. The rising flood is now a concern for the people who seek government's intervention. At the time of this recording, the Bialsa State Commissioner for Environment was out of the state for an official assignment. He promised to take up action to tackle the problem. You can be a part of eyewitness reports by sending events as they affect you and your environment. Just record and post on the eyewitness portal along with a brief description of what you're reporting about. But first, ensure you download the Channels TV app, Lunch, 
then swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu. Do follow the instructions on how to upload your story. Remember to include your location and a contact number. For now, let's see what you already posted this week. This picture shows pupils of TD Primary School in Shongom local government area of Gombe State. Our eyewitness reporter says they don't just sit on stones to lay under trees, but those of higher classes take up teaching positions due to lack of teachers. He wants the state government to give priority towards improving learning and teaching in primary schools. The next image from Ogun State is of a dilapidated bridge by gas plant bus stop on a logo road. Our eyewitness reporter says the bridge, which is the only link between a logo and altar, is being washed away by erosion. He's asking the state government to do something about it. And from Lagos is a flooded street at Jankara Market in Lagos Island. Our eyewitness reporter says the water has been on the street for more than a month. He's calling on the state government to help prevent disease outbreak as business in the area is now at a standstill. Also from Lagos, the next picture shows a blocked canal that runs through Doi Orile to Bodhi Thomas Street. According to the eyewitness reporter, the whole area is always flooded whenever it rains. The reporter wants the Lagos State Government to take urgent step to desilt the waterway. And finally, a picture of Ayinke Timson Drive in Satellite Town, also in Lagos State. The work has been long abandoned, causing hardship on residents. The reporter wants the contractor to remobilize to complete the road project. Thank you for sending in those pictures. Eyewitness Report returns same time next week. I'm Yomi Otaigbe.